You are looking live at the one, the only. You hear that? Oh, there's a heritage soft tail to the left and a heritage soft tail to the right and a CVO down the alley. Somebody's lighting it up this morning. It's a good day to ride. You hear it? Let's see if you can see them come out. Good morning, Kim. Oh, they're getting ready. That was me yesterday. That'll be me today. Oh yeah, baby. Oh, that's just, that's the, that's the sound everybody should wake up to. I'm telling you. That's the sound everybody should wake up to. I lost my little dog. There we go. Time to go to work, bruh. All right, all right. Oh no, I was so excited about that. I lost my little dog. Oh man. Come on, little dog. Let's go to work. We don't need to get on a soft tail to go from the garage over to the church. Come on, babe. What a gorgeous day. Look at this. Shorts and a t-shirt. Woo! This is the way it should be all the time. Good morning, sir. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We're going in to turn on the lights. I've got a few minutes here before Wednesday morning word. I told you guys I'm not preaching again this week. Come on. But I know that we're preaching on John 4. We're, no, we're preaching on the woman on the well. The woman at the well. The woman on the well. I guess maybe she was sitting on the well. Like on the corner of the well. I don't know. The woman at the well. A very well explored story. A very well explored piece of scripture. We will be cleaning the church later today. Getting everything ready for everybody. There's Dead Bear. Hey, Dead Bear. Go get Dead Bear. I don't know. What's the bear's name, everyone? There he goes. Oh, Susie says, good morning. All right, that's so cool. We are here at the Churchtown Church of God, 351 Old Stonehouse Road South, Boiling Springs, Pennsylvania. With Pastor Susie. Hi, baby. And the big bear. There she goes. So anyway, good morning, sir. We love you and we appreciate you. Thank you for giving us purpose, direction, understanding. Thank you for revealing to us the bigger picture of life that is out there. That is the kingdom of God and where we fit in. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. By the power of Holy Spirit. We are growing. We are going to be that person. Person you see. So like I said, I have a few minutes. Thank you for checking in and turning on the lights. We will be back at the church cleaning this afternoon after Wednesday morning word. Um, also got some things to take care of this afternoon. So going to be another busy day. But that's okay. That's good. It's good busy. This isn't bad busy in any way, shape or form. It's good busy. Anybody else's allergies getting there? Why are mine getting me overnight? <clears throat> Why are mine getting me overnight? That's weird. And I don't have bad allergies. There's people that really have strong allergic reactions. I don't. I just get it. Uh, you know. But why do mine get me overnight? I can feel it at night. We've had some pretty good talks on here lately. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters. Pretty good talk yesterday as well about discipleship and about fostering and nurturing of spiritual gifts. Now let us not forget that when we are saved, the Holy Spirit comes and indwells us, right? Dwells within us. We receive the power of the Holy Spirit, the moment of salvation. We begin that sanctification process by the power of the Holy Spirit at the moment of salvation. And part of that process, part of that indwelling are the gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit. Sometimes people make this out to be more complicated than it is, or more, um, how do I want to put this? More unique? Like, look at me, look at my gift, that sort of thing, or, or you're only saved if you have these gifts, or that sort of thing. No, we can read. Let's go there. <clears throat> Romans 12. 1 Corinthians 12, 
go to 1 Corinthians 12. There's a good list there. It's when Paul talks about the body of Christ. Right? The body of Christ. And how there are many parts but one body. So he says there are many gifts but one spirit. And so that though, and all of the gifts act together for the edification of the body. Not to tear it down. Not to make it show off but to strengthen the body, to be exactly what Jesus, what God envisions that body to be. We talked about that yesterday, remember? Remember how we lead with the church? Remember I said about the, I mean, I'm I'm watching this discussion of millennial involvement in church unfold, and I'm like, why why are you building a church to go out and try to, try to attract a certain kind of person. We're on the same boat. I could care less if you're a millennial. But I don't like the church. I don't care. Here's the church. Come on in. You'll hear the same message anybody will hear. Any generation, any race, color, creed, any sexual orientation, any anything. Come on in, you'll you'll hear the same message. The human body has many parts, but the part many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. Some of us are Jews, some are Gentiles, some are slaves, some are free. <clears throat> but we all have been baptized into one body by one spirit, and we all share the same spirit. Yes, the body has many different parts, not just one part. If the foot says, I am a part of the body, I am not a part of the body because I am not a hand, does that not make it, does that make it any less a part of the body? And if the ear says, I am not a part of the body because I am not an eye, would that make it any less a part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, how would you hear? It's a pretty good point. We talk about spiritual gifts. We talk about the presence of gifts. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit is the source of them all. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but it is the same God who works in all of us. A spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. To one person, the spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. To another, the same spirit gives a message of special knowledge. The same spirit gives great faith to another. And to someone else, the one spirit gives the gift of healing. He gives one person the power to perform miracles, another the ability to prophesy. He gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from the spirit of God or from another spirit. Still another person is given the ability to speak in unknown languages, while another is given the ability to interpret what is being said. It is the one and only Spirit who distributes all these gifts. And there's more. So it's not, this is not a debate, so to speak, about spiritual gifts and what are they, what is the list. And it is the understanding that as we come to faith, we are gifted in the Spirit. And like Jeremy brought up yesterday, sometimes God plays upon the talents that we have been developing or the way that we are, the way that we are constructed and some of the things that we knew that we could do. Like I was a practiced teacher before I began teaching the word and I was not afraid of public speaking before I became a preacher of the word. But when we do, when I do spiritual gift, it's not inventory, it's now it's not shocking to see that this is where I have been gifted. Sometimes an individual has a complete turnaround with spiritual gifting, just as there was a complete turnaround and and sort of a dramatic um, salvation experience. And all of a sudden, an individual who was completely stuttering and stammering in front of groups of people can profess and extort in front of people. Exhort, not extort. (laughs) Exhort in front of people, you know, make that profession, preach, teach, all of those things. That happens as well. But it's important for new believers to say, oh, okay, Lord, where am I going with this? What would you have me do? How are you gifting me to serve the body of Christ? 
And so that's another, that's a piece that we're talking about on the, on the radio program in terms of the new believer. It's a part of the discipleship process as well as, as you know, the body helps an individual grow, answer the questions. Good morning, Ryan. All of those different things. Part of that is the gifting of the Holy Spirit and understanding that and being able to deploy and employ that. You got to deploy that in the body and employ it in the body. And it's all going to be used for the edification of the body. Sometimes the edification or the strengthening of the body looks like correction. We can't forget that either. Good parents, their children don't run all over them. Good parents have good boundaries. Good parents understand good teaching. Good parents won't compromise. There are non-negotiables in any parent-child relationship. There should be. You will not do this. You will not behave this way. This is wrong. Remember, as a leader, you only get what you create or what you allow. Right? So when we talk about the edification of the church, it could look like correction. Like, I, uh, you know, if, the, if there's a gift of prophetic preaching, if there's a prophetic gift, and an individual has a, a, a capability of looking into a body, and, and the Spirit speaks into and through that individual and says, this body, we see it in, we see it in Corinthians. We see it all over in, in Paul's teaching. See it in Galatians, right? This body is headed in the wrong path. Here's the correction. So it can look like that. It can look like rebuke. It can look like correction as well. But um, so we can't ignore that. You know, we have a, a, a super hypersensitivity to feelings these days, which uh, maybe part of my gifting is that I just don't. <laughs> But I don't. I mean, I, I'm a very, I hope I'm compassionate and all of those different things. But there are things that, it, that feelings just simply aren't involved. Right? Things just, feelings just aren't involved in that equation. So I don't worry. You know, it's like the discussion about I won't, this is what I expect from a church. And this is what I'm tired of in, in the church. And I don't like this about church, and I don't like that about church, so I won't come to church. And, and we as a generation are just blah, blah, blah about church, and you old people, that then don't come to church. I mean, I can't, I want you to with my whole heart, but I can't do, I can't go chasing after people. I'm spending my life chasing after Jesus. You see the difference? The church goes chasing after people. The church has lost her first love. Her first love is not people. Her first love is Jesus. It's just my stupid theology. So, I gotta stay faithful to what I know. So, gotta stay faithful to what I know. And I understand all, you know, all the feelings that are involved. I don't like the feeling of this. I don't like the feeling of that. I, I you know, I can get that, but comes a point in time when you as an individual, Josh, Ryan, Kelly, everybody, what you as an individual, you got to plant your feet and say, this is where I stand. You can't go through life, well, that doesn't quite suit me. That doesn't quite suit me. This doesn't quite, this is what I believe. This is where I'm standing and I'm going to embed myself and I'm going to make it better. I'm going to stick to the word of God and find out where that goes. So... Come on, babe. Miss Susie, she's done playing with her bear. Come on up, girl. She went for a massive motorcycle ride last night. Hey, girl. There she is. Come on. Come on up and sit. She's not sure if she wants to. She might want to run around the sanctuary some more. Well, maybe she will. She gets her doggles on, and she gets her little snood on we put her in the bag and she sits there between me and her mama and we roll baby and we roll so somebody said something earlier i didn't have my glasses on da -da -da. hi dan seems that some have lost sight that it is god who calls believers to himself 
We, yeah, boom, Dennis. We want it to be up to us, right? I mean, sometimes for very, very good reasons. I don't, I don't, I don't discount that. There are you know, wonderful, wonderful pastors, teachers, preachers that they want, they chase after people because their heart burns. And so all of the, all of the right reasons were chasing after people. Um, that can, you know, just as easily lead to straying from your first love as well. Some don't. Some chase after people because they want the next biggest church around. They want the, they need to increase giving. They need to pay off this debt. They need to, or they just have prideful reasons. All and everything in between is true. So we're just people. We're just people doing this. We'll get it right. We'll get it wrong. Um, it, it, it's not cut and dried. I mean, in a sense, we do chase after people, right? But it's, it's Jesus says, go get them. That's when we go. <laughs> Does that make sense? So all of it is true. And, and again, you say, well, that's really hard to figure out. I think it is. I think it's supposed to be. I've said it a thousand times. I think that's what keeps us engaged in the scriptures. That's what keeps us engaged in this relationship. If Jesus simply said, here is the five-step process. Once I ascend, then... There wouldn't be much need to be on our knees saying, Lord, am I doing this right? Lord, help me. Lord, show me your vision. Lord, right? Lord comes first. There wouldn't be much need for that. And we would. We'd absolutely take it upon ourselves and say, you know, Dennis, you, under you and I understand the same five-step process. Look, I can do it much better than you. And then we would all get all, you know what I mean? We do that all the time from professional sports to politics. Church is different, man. So that's all I'm saying. Do, do the hard work. And the hard work is done on your knees. Figuring it out. Christ first. Christ centered. People say, well, you're hard on the... I don't... It doesn't matter to me what, who you, what your church is. It doesn't matter to me where it is. It doesn't matter if it's a home group, home church, church without walls, small church, big church, brand new church plant. Big box church, whatever the case may be. Are you Christ-centered? Is everything that you do a result of Christ asking you to do it? Well, how do we know that? You pray. Duh. <clears throat> Boom. See? That's my, that's my word today. Boom! Sorry, baby. I just scared her. Boom! We were, you know, and, and again, idol worship is, you know, thou shalt have no other gods before me. And then we talk about that. And we talk about idol worship. That's where our hearts go. We have been given the able, uh, given the ability to, in a sense, discern, decide what is good and what is evil. Right. You know, as evil has come into the world. And so and so we say I, I will use everything from a knife for good or evil to a church. And so I can just as easily worship the church in my position and my money and, and have, you know, do it all in the name of Jesus. And we've seen that. We've seen that. Spiritual corruption. So, and, and I, I'm saying, I'm, this isn't like, this is the church today. I'm just saying that every individual who is a leader in this regard, you know, this is the process. It's difficult. Discerning. And, and staying faithful to God's vision, to God's word, and to the DNA that he's giving your church. So that's, 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 all, that's what I preach, right? Be Christ-centered. How am I Christ-centered? Put Christ at the center. <laughs> you know? But, 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 but I've had these, I, uh, this is what I think, this is what I've had these visions. I understand that. Put Christ at the center. That's, and go from there. You won't be disappointed, I guarantee you that. But can you be content in God's vision? Or does it have to be your vision? Does it have to be according to that book you read? Or does it have to be according to this book you read? All of those things, see, that's, that's all I ever say. 
The end result is what Jesus wants it to be, and I can't, I'm not questioning that. I'm only challenging the church, Christ-centered. Yeah, right. None before me. No other idols before me. There's nothing that comes before me. No, you, you, I, I don't think you, sort of kidding, but sort of not, that, that, that is very much a mode of thinking that I am, that actually hits home. Good morning, April. That hits home to me, Dennis, because that's probably the, the most rebuking that I feel from the Holy Spirit, because I very much fall into that mode. I want to put God, you know, and, and I am very. I try to be very intentional about that this discernment and praying and put, putting God in the center in the first. And then once I have done that, now let's be transparent here. And this is Brian. Once I have done that, then I say, well, good. I've got that square, so now I can go ahead and do all. You know, I can, I can crave whatever I want to. I can, you know, lust after whatever material goods I want because I'm good. I put God first, you see? So you actually struck a nerve. And that is something that I have to, again, continually examine in my life and intentionally not do. And so, it, and it, because we, we talk about being happy in God's provision, you know, that means in America something completely different than it means in most of the world. Being happy in God's provision as a Christian in China, it means something completely different than a Christian in America. And be, but being happy in God's provision, regardless of where you are, is key. Is this is mine? This is this is this is my provision, and I'm content. I'm not I'm not searching after more stuff, more goods, more things, because God has provided a debt free life. Ooh, you know what that means? I, I'm free. I can go back into debt. I can go get that stuff because I can afford the debt now. <sighs> See, that's me. It's me. I have also have no, like, conception of money. Like, money, for me, has always just been a liquid that has gone through the sieve. I, if I have it, I have it. If I don't, I don't. You know what I mean? So I, I don't do well with those concepts. I must turn that over to others. But that's, that's, my, that's one of my great weaknesses. Um, and I justify it by saying I'm doing it the right way. So it is something that I must self-monitor. We talk about self-spiritual care and, and sort of the cracks in the armor into which the enemy can seep and say, you know, oh, yeah, I know how you're made, too. Check, mm, check this out. Check this out. You can go here. You can go there. You can do this. You can do that. But don't worry because you put God first. And so I must constantly, in terms of my own spiritual self-care, say, what am I doing? What am I th how am I thinking about that? Am I content? Am I happy? Let's take a look at this. Stop the thinking about what you're what you could possibly do, that, those sorts of things. And Kelly rebukes me for that as well. That's how we sort of work together. She'll be like, stop it. So, you know, you, you just did, you, you know, like I said, when you talk about the individual believer in the way God, you know, it's it, each and every individual figuring out, thank you, Jesus, how am I made? How am I made? Show me all the strength, all the weakness, all the good, the bad, the ugly, the glorious. Show me everything, Lord. So I can, by your power, Father God, grow in your vision of who I am. Does that, you know? So, yeah. You touched, you touched one there. Yes, we do. We, we can rationalize that. And spiritually, we will rationalize it as well. You know, I am a good Christian, therefore I will now go sin over here, go lust after material goods here. I feel I am a good Christian, therefore I will. So, yeah, and then, and, 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 so how do you get around that? You just, it's, it's, it's living with him. It's 
It's not ignoring him. It's, it's being in relationship with him. It's, it's being vigilant in your relationship with him and your examination of self. You say, I want to be the person that he sees. So I don't just sit back on my couch and say, hey, here we go. You know? Say, if he wants to rid me of those sorts of feelings, chances are he's going to put me in those sorts of situations so that I can make the decision to overcome or to succumb. Let's not forget that. I mean, yeah, I would love all of the uh, negative aspects of my personality and of my spirituality and my weaknesses all just to be miraculously gone. And I won't say that that can happen because I never question God's sovereignty, but chances are you're going to grow out of them. And one of the ways that the Lord will inspire you to grow is as you're walking with Holy Spirit, you will, he will put you, he'll say, okay, boom, 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 curtain A, curtain B, curtain C, you know, like, you know what's up. Can you grow out of choosing those negative choices all the time? Can you grow out of that and choose curtain A, the right path, the narrow path? Can you choose the narrow path? And, and the Lord is going, hmm, what will he do? What will he do? You know, um, not saying that he doesn't know what I'll do. But you know what I'm saying. So you're putting those challenging situations to continue to grow uh, in that path. And you, it, you, you will have to make those choices. And, and a part of that process is, Lord, what would you have me choose? Lord, look where I am right now. Inspire me into the right choice, Father God. And help me be content in the vision that you have for me and my life. And we grow that way. But I make mistakes. I make mistakes too. I've already shared one of my big weaknesses and the things that I have to turn around and say, what am I doing? Stop it. Look at, oh my goodness, look at my life. Stop it. Get behind me, Satan. I'm happy. Man, am I happy. My goodness, am I happy. Yeah, you can either swim or you learn to swim fast. <laughs> exactly. I like, you know, and, and it, 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 is like, it is like that, you know? I mean, you're, there you are. The Lord says, okay, if you want to grow out of this sin of temptation and the material goods, then he'll set you up. Not set you up to fail, he'll, but there you are in life and you'll have choice A, choice B, choice C, and you know, you know, you're praying, you're discerning my choices, my choices, my choices, and you need to make the choice and continue to grow intentionally. This is true, too. That's what I mean. You've got to check yourself when you say God is setting you up in all of these different things. There are situations that you are moving into in your life, and God understands that you absolutely can overcome. And he wants to inspire you, teach you, help you grow to overcome. And, and as you just submit your will to his, you can, you can see and feel and know where to go. You can see how difficult this is to even articulate, right? Because one of the most common questions of new believers, so to speak, would be, you know, we, well, we heard it, right? How do you hear God's voice? How do you know? Man, and I really do believe that for as many people as there are believers in the world, there are as many answers to that. There will be some common responses in terms of God's word, right? But, you know, He's going to speak through circumstance. He's going to speak through feelings at times. He's going to speak through other people at times. He's going to speak into your prayer life. He's going to speak into, you know, ra the randomness of the world. When you, you understand of what you've been praying for, what you've been praying, and then this completely one in a billion thing happens, and you're like, Like I said, when you're a Christian, you sort of have to begin to believe in lots of coincidences because the Lord will demonstrate to you a lot of truth, a lot of vision, a lot of teaching in your circumstances and in the people that you know and in his word.
Yeah. So anyway, that's the, how God will explore all of those parts of your heart. You say, Lord, I'm trying to overcome this visual addiction or this idea of pornography. Why is, does it seem to be everywhere? Well, first of all, it is everywhere. But now you're more sensitive to it. Now when you look at lingerie magazines, you see them in a different light because you've been given a, a different way of understanding sexuality, pornography, and the way people should present themselves. So your spiritual eyes are open where before the things that just didn't matter to you now do matter, point one. Point two, because it's not going away. You're not going to be put in a bubble. You must choose your way away from that. And you're going to have those choices presented. You see what I'm saying? And, and this is where you say, Lord, by the power of the Holy Spirit, please help me now to turn right. Turn, just turn away and move in a different direction. Dear Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. And turn away and move in a different direction. Does that make sense? And, and, and through that, you say, that's freaking hard. Yes, it is. It'll get a little bit easier each and every time. But stay the course and grow and be different. Practice holiness. You know, and I wish, I, you know, people, you know, issues of disease, issues of addiction, issues of relationship. Issues. I wish I could just say, here it is. Whew. Here's the Holy Spirit. Boom, you're all better. Woo. No, you can be all better. You can be all better, but submit and stay the course. One decision at a time. Again, not to take away God's sovereignty. If he so chooses, boom, all better. Believe that with all of my heart as well. But more than likely, it's going to be the lengthier scenario of growth. Right? The lengthier scenario of growth in his strength. And that's, that's when, and you know, April, like, you know, you know that, you know, you're, you're, you're feeling that draw to make that wrong decision you're feeling that incredible pull of idol worship. You're feeling that incredible pull of just getting back on the path of destruction. It's powerful stuff. And, and that is when you just, in my world, you just say, stop, 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 Lord. One more time, Lord. Let me turn back to the path. One more time. Just one more, and we'll cross the next bridge when we come to it. But right now, Father God, in his strength, he will, he, will, he will bless you for that submission. He will empower you in that submission. And you can be different, and you can walk a different path, and you can grow in the vision that he has for your life. Am I right, brothers and sisters? But any preacher that's standing in front of you saying, piece of cake. All you need to do is submit to this church. All you need to do is this five-step process. All you need to do is, you know, no, we need to be in the, we need to be in fellowship together, helping one another, talking with one another, serving one another by the power of Holy Spirit. What do you got there, Xavier? Sliding into class. Any explanation come along with that? <laughs> Hi, Andrea. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, here we go. We can't go. We can't do <coughs> or go through these things on our own. But I believe he also allows these things. Boom, boom. Exactly, exactly, exactly. We, you know, he allows those things. And I would argue, with, uh, not argue in a bad way, but I would say, yeah, we can go through those things alone on our own. We just can't get back. We can't walk that narrow path on our own. We can walk the pathway of destruction by God. You know what I'm saying? 
And we'll be right into destruction and right into hell. All on our own. Um, but yeah, I mean, that, this is exactly the truth, April. We say, Lord, now I submit. I want to be different. I want to be, you know, what you see. All of those things. And one decision at a time by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can grow away from the pathway to the highway to hell. Boom, 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 boom. Word of the day. I was put into circumstances. Whoops, hold on. I just expanded that. <clears throat> where I had to downsize my life. Three times in as many years. Ooh, that's, it was difficult the first time. The third time it was freeing. I realized my stuff had me, not the all. Barbara, we need to talk. That's my testimony, girl. Also leaned heavily on having an attitude of gratitude for the Lord provided for me. Something I try to do daily now. Oh, yes. Abundant provision. I've never made less. I've never had more. And I don't mean stuff. I've never had more provision. There, I, I lack nothing. And all of that, you know, when you're built up in a career and you have home and career and cars and all of the trappings. That's why they're called trappings. Did you ever think about that? You think, I can't get away from this. How, how in the world will this be possible, Father God? I'll just stay in all of this debt and serve you as well. Well, you can't serve two masters. He made that all possible. It was dramatic. It was traumatic. It's so challenging. <clears throat> And then we were, you know, the story even of just hanging on to our house, that was like the last vestige, the last foothold that we had in this world, so to speak, hanging on to that house and saying, no, honey, no, all or nothing, it's gone. <clears throat> well, oh my goodness, you two. Indeed, indeed. Well, folks, it's nine o'clock. I know that you just came in late, Xavier, and a few of you just joined us, but we've got Wednesday morning word at 930. I've got to go say goodbye to my beloved as she heads off to work. <clears throat> I think we'll be taking a look at John 4 today, but I'm not quite sure. Like I said, part of the reason why it's a lighter week for me is that the women's ministry is taking over the, the uh, Sunday service, and I get to enjoy and be a participant and so um, uh, that gives me time to ride my motorcycle and mow my grass and uh, those sorts of things. So um, we're looking very much forward to that on Sunday as well. So I don't know if your Church of God church is practicing thank offering Sunday, but uh, I hope they are. So until tomorrow, my brothers and sisters, stay the course, right? One decision at a time by the power of God. It is possible. We three are heading to the chiropractor. Mads felt yesterday she's hurting. Oh, oh, oh. I will, Kelly. Oh, there you go. See, it's all coming together, Barbara. Kelly, I will. Absolutely. Um, I love you guys. I appreciate you. Again, you never have to ask permission to share the video if you think that it is useful. And I do appreciate that. We make all kinds of new friends that way. So in Jesus' name, Father God, thank you. Lead us, Holy Spirit, today as we submit, as we, just, we make those decisions in our lives that lead us on the path of holiness as adopted sons or daughters of the Most High God. We thank you so much. That is impossible without you, Lord. Impossible impossible to be the people that you see without you. Holy Spirit, lead us in Jesus' name. Amen. I appreciate all of you guys and all of your input and all of your prayers and checking in and all of your perspectives. April, thank you. Kelly, thank you. Ryan, I don't want to miss anybody. Xavier, Dennis, everybody. Thank you so much, Josh, everybody, Liz. So God bless. Take care. We will see you. I'm trying to think. Should be no reason why I can't see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.